Hey, this is Old Man Metal. Hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the 16th episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. Thank you for joining me today, and thanks to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's from a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ is a great guitarist and an independent musician, and he's provided music for this show since day one, so thanks to him. And please go and check him out. The link to his channel is in the show notes below. So, the business of the day is my top 10 album list for 2022. I released it on New Year's Day as an hourly countdown on Twitter, like I have for the previous four years. And this episode is the same list, but with a bit more exposition, because I've got a little bit more than 280 characters to work with here. So, without further ado... Rounding out the bottom at number 10 is Chapter 3 from Voorhees. Chapter 3 is the second full-length album from French death metaler Voorhees, and if that sounds confusing, well, Chapter 1 was an EP. Not surprisingly, given the band name, band logo, and cover art, they are a slasher film-themed band. Chapter 3 is mostly mid-paced modern Euro death that's really reminiscent of Vader in places. The riffing is a great, engaging blend of approaches with lots of crushing death chugs and catchy power chords and single note work, varied by sharp techish riffing, nice shear-laden tremolo-picked riffs, and some really sweet extended traditional leads that sound like what Andy LaRocque would play if he was in a death metal band. As would be expected for the style, the drums are big, battering, and double bass laden, and the vocals are done in a semi-coherent, gruff, lower registers, spoken and shouted style. Again, Vader's a pretty good comparison. The production is style appropriately full and modernish and pretty clean with just a bit of grit. All things considered, this is a really well done example of the style, and I'd recommend it to anyone who likes modern Euro death like Vader or Modern Unleashed or that sort of thing. Standout tracks are Freshly Deceased, a tale from the dark side, and they move, they breathe, they suck. I don't know who they are, but apparently sucking is what they do. Coming in at number nine is Forthcoming Revelation. This is the first release from Germany's Mesticator, and it is one hell of a debut. It's an intro, an outro, and eight tracks of Scandinavian-style death thrash that would have been right at home in the early 2000s. It features driving, high-energy, synco-chug-heavy death thrash riffing and song structures, with the excellent contrasting thematic passages and ripping leads typical of the style. All pushed by aggressive thrash drumming, boosted as necessary by up-tempo double bass rolls. The gritty but tight buzzsaw production is style appropriate, as are the gruff cadence lower register thrash shout vocals. Execution is all around excellent. You really couldn't ask for much better than this for the genre. With this kind of a start, Mesticator are clearly a band to watch in 2023. Standout tracks are Vaderous Ferocity, My Twisted Mind, and Unmask the Hypocrisy. Taking the number 8 slot, we have All Paths Are Left Here. This is the debut LP from the Ukrainian band Nekrom, and they play old-school Swedish death metal. One of the first death metal albums I ever bought was Unleashed Where No Life Dwells, and the old-school Swedish approach to death metal was one of the things that first really attracted me to the genre. Not surprisingly, then, I'm a sucker for retro old-school Swedeth. And there's a lot of it around, metric shit-tons, in fact, and as with everything else in the world, a small percentage of it stands out above the rest. What makes one modern homage to the Swedeth ancestor god stand above the rest is, in my opinion, largely the riffing. It's not the production, which is always pretty much the same classic Sunlight Studio sound, or the vocals, which are always pretty much of a likeness, even in terms of the exact timbre. It's not the drumming either, which invariably has a well-filled, outsized traditional metal core, with an extra forward-leaning disbeat impetus, the telltale influence of Swedish D-beat punk, and lots of tight, fast double bass sections. For this style, the riffs carry the burden of proof as far as awesomeness goes, and this is pure, extra-aggressive, old-school Swedeth with top-tier riffing throughout. It checks every box for the style quite well, like Dexter St. Jock on someone's wife on a beach. It's just a crushing, pummeling beast of an album, and like I said about Mesticator, with a debut of this caliber, Necrom are a band to watch in 2023. Standout tracks are Fathers Will Feast, Walls Have Hands, and Templars Are Coming. And at number seven, we have Let There Be Witchery. Another midnight album, another top ten spot. It's as natural as rain on a friggin' Sunday morning. This is Midnight's second full length on Metal Blade and their fifth LP overall, following 2020's Rebirth by Blasphemy like a pox after a plague. Funnily enough, they both caught the number seven spot for their respective year. I don't know what that's about. 
For anyone who's not familiar with Athanar by this point in the game, he is, among other things, the sole driving force behind Midnight, under which seemingly innocuous moniker he plays a swaggering, sleazy, stripped-down, black speed metal alloy that I like to describe as Venom meets Motorhead with an extra side of Satan. But even that doesn't really do it justice. This is bare-bones, hook-and-lead-driven, verse-chorus, blues-blessed, visceral metal, the kind of metal that makes you move, not think. Its structural simplicity is an inherent virtue, leaving the riffs and the leads to do the talking and the walking. The chorus is the title of the song four times over. The verses are just a verbal reflection of an audacious, gleeful dissolution, and the music itself is the reflection of an attitude. It's the logical and paradoxically regressive end result of the primordial unholy urge that first begat metal, calcined down into its component atoms by fires hotter than the devil's taint, and spewed forth anew into the world again through a steely speed metal vast deference. It's dirtier than a nun in a whorehouse. It's midnight. Standout tracks are Devil Virgin, Sex Witchery, and Track 4, which I don't want to say the title of because it'll get the video flagged faster than a priest on a... Taking the coveted number six slot is, and then the bombs came, from Creeping Flesh. So there's a small niche in the vast crack smoldering plains of death metal that I particularly love. I don't want to say that Hail of Bullets started it, but their 2008 debut of Frost and War is what really got it on my radar. They kind of took the asphyx style of death doom from the early 90s and desiccated it, leaving just a bleak, austere, unresistibly grinding feel, kind of the musical equivalent of Abandon All Hope Ye Who Enter Here. With a focus on grim martial riffing, plus well-placed contrasting emotive Sweedeth-inspired elements, specifically tremolo picking and thematic lead work, they forged music that embodies the horror, brutality, triumph, and despair of war, war on a personal level, in a musically perfect way. Well, Creeping Flesh or Bivouac right in the middle of that same little war-torn valley of abandonment and despair, and they blaze the same trail as Hail of Bullets, using the same T.O. and E. and the same tactics. This, Creeping Flesh's second LP, is a cohesive chunk of weighty, doomish war-themed death metal that paints a bleak, meat-grinding martial landscape, using grim, crushing mid-paced death chugs and austere power chords, with faster tremolo pick riffing providing a contrasting sense of forward momentum and emotive lead work giving occasional glimpses of triumph and loss. And looking back at past ratings, it really is on par with much of the best of this style. Standout tracks are Titan Grip, like so many before them, and decrowned. Halfway to the top at number five is Angels Hung from the Arches of Heaven from Goat Whore. Goat Whore is another band that should need no introduction. They've been playing their unique blend of black metal, death metal, and thrash since 1997, and they've been playing it at a consistently ace level the entire time. After 25 years and 7 LPs, you should pretty much know what you're going to get from the eighth one, and if you think it's another sonic evisceration, you're right. Clearly, Goat Horror is still at the top of their darkly dissonant, mercilessly incisive form. In fact, it's more than that. Angels Hung from the Arches of Heaven is one of the best albums they've ever released. It's definitely in their top three, in my opinion, and that's out of a remarkably solid discography. Is it their best? Could be. Honestly, it's either this one or Carving Out the Eyes of God for my money. While Goat Horror's music and sound haven't really changed much over the years, each album seems to have a slightly different vibe to it, and the vibe for Angels is extra thrashy. In addition to the usual devastating employment of blitz speed flanking fire thrash riffing, there are some really killer classic thrash breaks to be had here, most notably on Death From Above and Nile. As always, you can't go wrong with Goat Whore. They always produce top-tier metal, and they always put on one hell of a show. Standout tracks are The Bestowal of Abomination, Death From Above, and And I Was Delivered From The Wound of Perdition because of the two ands. Coming in at number four is The Thing from the Grave. I said earlier that I'm a sucker for the old school Swedish death metal style and that there's a lot of retro stuff in that vein around for the last few years. And I also said that it's the riffs that make one such release stand out above the horde. And this, the second LP from Sweden's In Pain, is riffy as fuck. It's also 100% authentic. It completely captures the old magic, and it verges on the best of the early 90s stuff, and I don't say that lightly at all. Listening to this album for the first time honestly made me feel like listening to Entombed for the first time some 30-odd years ago. It's not surprising then to find that In Pain actually is an OG band, with roots back to 92, 
a pair of demos in 93 and 94, and an original member in Michael Anderson, who's currently on bass, but has done time on both guitar and vocals over the years. Everything is spot on about this release, from the 100% pure classic components and structures, to the bonafide 90s feel, to the dimed out HM2 guitar tone and the sunlight drench production, this is the best old school Swedish death metal of the year. Standout tracks are Mistress of the Dark, Kill, and The Beast Within. Taking the number three slot, we have Chance from Purgatory from Graceless. This is their third LP, and as the follow-up to 2020's Where Vultures Know Your Name, to me, it's really a nice step up. Vultures was a great album that took the number 17 slot for me that year, where Chance is clearly top five material. It's a classic-sized, eight-track, 45-minute juggernaut of consistently mid-length, down- and mid-tempo doomish death metal that's unrelentingly driven by grinding, propulsive death chugs and power chord brutality, creating a dystopian, implacable, war-scorched feel. Contrasting Death Doom Quagmire's delay and demoralize, and vehement tremolo picked eruptions occasionally provide glimpses of hope, but more often than not just beget another layer of hellish torment. Passages are deftly interwoven by well-executed thematic lead work, everything is well pushed by beefy modern Eurodeath drumming, and compelling effective lead work modulates the mood of the music, again, as leaf to darken it is to lighten it. The vocals have a suitably brutal gutturality while maintaining a minimal level of intelligibility, and the production is full, arid, a bit grimy, and tinged with reverb. This is an excellent modern death metal album and surely a harbinger of things to come. Standout tracks are Blood of the Brave, Chance from Purgatory, and Saint. Coming in at number two is Death Western from Spirit World. This is their second full-length album, and I missed their debut album, Pagan Rhythms, back in 2020. It completely flew under my radar somehow. But if I had known about it, it would absolutely have snagged the number two spot that year. It was an absolute ass-kicker of a debut. Spirit World's formula is really straightforward, and it's eminently effective as well. It's a megadose of chunky thrash that leans heavily on bombastic chugs and Season Zero Slayer riffs, with layers of old-school crossover riffing for dynamic variety all intuitively blended to kinetic perfection, leavened with bits of groove and an occasional bouncy, vivacious hardcore feel, then spattered with tasty, impious thrash leads and punctuated throughout by rabid crossover vocals, plus Deadwood thematic bits and cowboy hats. This album is the real deal. If this album moved in next door to you, your lawn would fucking explode. This album will make you break shit like it's 1990 again, and it'll make you wear a cowboy hat while you do it. Standout tracks are all of them. Every single damn track. And finally, taking album of the year for 2022 is Darkened with The Black Winter. And this is another step-up story like Graceless. This vastly experienced international crew dropped their first LP as Darkened, titled Kingdom of Decay, in 2020. And I ranked it number 15 or 16 for that year just ahead of Graceless's release, in fact. Kingdom of Decay is a great album and an excellent debut, and it's actually still in fairly regular rotation two years later. But The Black Winter is top of class. It's a masterful slab of modern Euro death that shows a huge old-school sweet death influence. It lays bare the cadaverous remains of a death-shadowed realm of torment, despair, and unlife, using implacable syncopated martial death chug sections and propulsive thrash chugs, tempered by darkling, vaguely exotic power chord riffing, ominous eldritch tremolo pick sections, and lead work that pivots from exalted to maudlin to spiteful, all over an old-style sweet death rhythm section of well-filled traditional drums, bolstered by heaping helpings of rolling double bass and occasionally pushed by D-beats. All the components are of top-shelf quality, and their assemblage into a cohesive whole is of consistently excellent craftsmanship. The end result is expertly polished to a slightly gritty modern production with a tinge of that old sunlight sound. There's nothing not to like here and everything to love if you're a fan of, say, current era Unleashed. Of course, your mileage may vary, but for my money, The Black Winter was the album of 2022, and it establishes Darkened as master wielders of the magnificent old Zweihander that is Scandinavian death metal. Standout tracks. All of them are top tier, but Plague of Despair gets the nod as the best track, and it's honestly one of the best songs I've heard all year. And that's it for this episode. 
Thanks for joining me today and listening to me talk about my favorite albums from 2022. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please take a second and give the video a like. It's an easy way to tell YouTube that you enjoyed the video and that you want to see more like it. If you're interested in checking out any of these albums, all of them except Death Western are on my Bandcamp fan page, which I'll link to in the show notes below. And the only reason that Death Western isn't on there is because when I bought it, it wasn't available on Bandcamp. Normally, Bandcamp is where I try to do all of my music purchasing if I can. So thanks for joining me today, and if you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new friends. Until next time, keep those horns up high, and take care. Old Man Metal's Musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Rat Sound Review Network. Rats Eye Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including the flagship show, Rats Eye Review, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Rats Eye Review spin-offs, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past, and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's Musings, the Metal Thrashing Nerd Podcast with Metal Thrashing Mike, the Timo Toki Podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon founding member Timo Toki, the BS Sessions with Mark and Jerry, Just the Cheese Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam, and the Music is Live Podcast with Lou Mavs. The Rat Style Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsileReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsile Review Network. We're, We're taking, taking over. over.